Hi guys, Tappy, hope you're all keeping well. Yes, it is Renault 5 GT Turbo time. Again, we went out for a drive in this on the channel recently, and my word, guaranteed to put a smile on your face every time. This video is all about buying one. If you're looking to buy one of these cars, have a watch of this. Hopefully the advice will be helpful. And apologies if there's a lot of birdsong here. It's a lovely day and the birds are chirping away like crazy. So, this video is gonna be about the Renault 5 GT Turbo Phase 2, produced from 1988 through to 1991. Now, if you are thinking about buying one of these, the first thing you need to do is get on to the Renault 5 GT Turbo owners Facebook group straight away. There's about 10,000 members on there and they all share one thing in common, that's a love for these cars. A lot of great advice on there and quite often cars come up for sale. So it's definitely the place to be if you like these cars or are thinking about buying one. Now, where to start because there is a lot to talk about. The first thing I think we can discuss is the market right now. And I have noticed there are fewer and fewer cars available. And I think that's for two primary reasons. The first of which is they're rare. They're getting rarer and rarer by the day. The second of which is I think people are starting to realize that these cars are sort of forgotten gems and looking to get hold of them as future investments. A whole load of love for these things, right? People getting hold of them, doing them up, looking after them and just holding on to them to enjoy. So, very few cars available to buy on the market. Uh, let's have a look at values, a quick chat around values. What can you expect to pay? Well, quite honestly, anything, really. How well they've been done up or tuned or the condition they're in or what's happened to them or their history. But even for a kind of dog-eared, messy one that might have been modified or body kit all over it, maybe even a bit of rust, you're probably looking still at paying between five and six grand for, for a car at that level now. Uh, such is the demand and, and such is the desirability. So five or six grand is probably going to get you one that's definitely a project car. I think this one in this condition is probably worth about 15-ish, there or thereabouts. It's in great condition, it's got 10 owner history though, 122,000 miles on the clock, but in terms of being a standard car, it's pretty close. Drives great and is not too rough around the edges. Uh, although admittedly right now, it's covered in bits of tree and pollen. So we'll, we'll sort that out at some point. But the concourse level cars are probably gonna be upwards of 20K plus, maybe 24, 25 for a concourse car, low miles, 60K miles perhaps, completely standard, everything original. You're gonna be paying a lot of money for one of those. And there's very, very few out there that are like that, even with the original exhaust, very few. If you've got one of those cars, congratulations, hold on to it and do look after it. So, uh, definitely worth doing your research there and really asking yourself the question, what do I want? What have I got time to do? Do I wanna just buy one off the shelf that's ready to go and good? Or do I want a project? Really do think about that. Colors, what colors? Can you get well i have to do this from memory but i think three shades of white there was a glacier white pearl white and a panda white panda white pretty rare glacier white tends to be the most common i had a pearl white one back in the day kind of pinky creamy color if i can kind of describe it like that it's an interesting one don't see many of those uh, there was a, a light blue one uh, there was a gray one two shades of red a black and a really really rare silver color Renault 5 gt turbo I think it's called Gris Argent in French maybe, or Gris Argent, something like that. But it's kind of a light silvery colour like you'd see on a normal silver car. Don't see many of those at all. I think the, I've only ever seen one or two photos once. If you've got one of those, wow, that's probably uh, a, a nice bit of car. The other one is the Raider, which was produced in the latter years of this car. And that's a kind of dark blue with dark blue alloy wheels and a blue accent on the seat as well. Uh, by the way, I will put a link in the description for the Renault 5 uh, GT Turbo Owners Club on Facebook. Do join if you're after one of these. I forgot to say that at the top of the video, saying it now. So there, it's said. 
So, uh, yeah, lots of different colours available, but the most common ones tend to be white, greys and reds these days. Black, a little bit more rarer. Uh, Raiders even rarer still. But I want to walk around the car uh, and talk about all the things that you need to think about and look for if you're buying one of these. Now, I'm not a qualified mechanic in any way, shape or form, but I do know these cars pretty well and I know what to look out for uh, if you're buying one. Uh, I've learnt my lessons <laughs> the hard way in, in the history of ownership. Uh, of these cars, the third one of these I've owned now. So, um, yeah, what I'll do is I'll grab the camera and we'll just take a look around and talk about some of the things that you should be considering. And I hope the advice does help you. If it does, do consider a sub because it helps promote these cars, keeps the memories alive. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to check, and it kind of goes without saying, is the history. And this wide angle lens really coming in handy right now. Okay, and specifically this here. I'll try and zoom on, in on that. Hopefully it'll focus. Come on, focus. Thank you very much. The mileage, the odometer. So it is obviously, as you can see, it's an analog odometer, right? None of that digital stuff you get these days that can't really be tinkered with. But these, very easy to clock. All you needed to do was get behind it and tweak the dials and your car has done much less miles than it has in reality. So do check that, right? And the things you can look for are, are the, dial, are the numbers there all straight? If they're nicely lined up, it's probably good. If there's some that are showing off angle, then yeah, it might have been played with. Of course, do your research as well, right? 122,000 miles here, which is absolutely true, going back through the MOT history, and the car just feels about right. If you've got a kind of spidey sense of telling you, hey, something isn't right, you know, you've got a, a 10 owner car which is showing 60,000 miles on the clock, and everything looks really worn out, probably hasn't done 60,000 miles, right? So do your research there, check the MOT history, check all the data you can to ensure that the mileage is true. And then from the history itself, look at the MOT, what's, what's gone wrong, what's been done, what kind of documentation does the car have, how much has it been tweaked, what people done to it. So it's a really good thing to do when buying a car like this. It's going to have had a, seen a lot of things happen, right? Uh, a lot of uh, a lot of World Cup wins throughout its, its time. So have a think about the history and just do your research, okay? Goes without saying. So, other things to look for. Um, the first thing you probably want to do is start the car from cold. And this car has been running a little bit, so it's not quite cold, but they're a pig to start from cold. You're gonna to want to get the choke on uh, down here. You're gonna to need to get the choke going. And um, yeah, honestly, they really are a pain to start from cold and they take a while to warm up. So this one is warm, so it should tick over quite nicely if I get the key in there correctly. Uh, so we will do that now. Okay, there you go. Okay, so things to look for. Now, the oil pressure gauge there. Uh, in this car, it's a little bit temperamental, but I know it's good because it occasionally shows true. Before you start the car, that's an oil level, and when the car's running, it will show your oil pressure, and you can see it is moving a little bit there. Uh, kind of wants to be up around the middle, uh, uh, which means your car is working correctly. So that seems to be looking all right at the moment, actually. Sometimes it doesn't work at all. Uh, the speedo has been a bit iffy sometimes as well, but all good at the moment. This car runs pretty well. Okay, quick post edit here. These cars, I believe, should idle at 750, 850 RPM from the factory. You can see the counter there is showing 1,000 RPM. I'm not sure how accurate they are, but the car sounds about right. To me, it feels right. It's not going to stall. It sounds good. So if the car's all over the place, but it feels lumpy, doesn't feel right, again, check it out. So start the car. See how it goes. See how it warms up. See how it feels to you, right? Uh, and if you've got someone that knows these cars, take them along with you, because they will be an absolute godsend. Right, next thing to check, we have to get under the hood of this thing, so let's open the bonnet up. Okay, so here we are under the bonnet of the Renault 5 GT Turbo, and the first thing to look for is the engine. Does it have one? Good. Is it the right one? Another thing to check. This is the C1J engine, four pot, uh, 1.4, and it looks like this with a little elf oil cap on there. Uh, very familiar to those who know it. Turbo here, block here, alternator there, Cooling here, intercooler here, uh, cooling uh, water reservoir here, and air intake down there. As you can see, if you know these cars, it's not standard. Uh, so we've got Samco type hoses, uprated hoses, uprated 
uh, rad uprated oil cooler uprated intercooler uh, because these cars were renowned for overheating so you've got your engine running this isn't now so you can hear me uh, very important to see that the first thing is that it's not running too hot use the gauge use the gauge inside the car there uh, but check this here the cooling fan that should be kicking in uh, watch the gauge carefully if the gauge is getting up to sort of halfway point and it hasn't kicked in just be very careful that you're not overheating the car very very important they were renowned for overheating so this one is kind of uprated a little bit for better reliability uh, the original hoses are kind of these braided uh, black things covered in netting i'll see if i can cut through to an original picture to show you those whilst i'm talking away whilst i'm gassing away but uh, yeah things to look out for other things to look out for is it is it the right engine I, I talked about that c1j but some of them have been upgraded there's f4 there's clear engines there's all kinds of crazy mods that people do so just check it looks like this original and good to go so as i say they're renowned for overheating uh how do you check if it's overheating or has it been damaged by overheating so that the big thing to go is the head gasket now the bottom end on these engines is pretty darn good i'm not gonna lie pretty strong pretty resilient can take a bit you might get your crack liners occasionally but uh, generally very very good and that's why they were so tunable at uh, top end pretty good gasket is definitely one you need to look out for so head gasket failure very common caused by overheating warped head whatever skim needs to be skimmed and redone and check for any oil in here right take the top off check if there's any oil in there it's looking weird or any kind of mayonnaise stuff on the dipstick dipstick is located just down here on this car and just um, have a kind of good check for any leakage around the gasket see if it's looking good to you but very important to check that because these cars as i say renowned for overheating so the next thing to look out for is the turbo okay and check for any leakages around here this one had a tiny bit of a, a water leak on the jacket don't forget these are uh, let's see if I can zoom in on that a little bit. These are water-cooled uh, turbos. The phase one weren't water-cooled, so better reliability. And as you can see here, this turbo is pretty new, and that heat shield is pretty immaculate, so it's in really good condition. Let's uh, so just look at it physically. The other thing to know is uh, you have to get around the back of the car and have a look at the exhaust. If you've got sort of puffs of blue smoke coming out of there at idle, um, it could indicate a turbo that's on the way out so that's oil seeping through the seals into the exhaust and that would mean that you need to replace turbo not too cheap to get a recon one they're only small turbos uh, but check for that uh, this one runs completely clean so that's very good so turbo check that and honestly the, in terms of the engine and the gearbox they're pretty reliable as you can see simplicity is key here right there is not a lot to them compared to a modern car right where my word oh, look at these uh, thank you tree uh, making the pride and joy look look dirty there but yeah not a lot to them really very simple very easy to work on and as i say lots of people with almost religious like knowledge of these cars um, so tap into all the resources that are available to you so I should also quickly talk about the gears as well they should all work the gears on these bit of a dark art bit of guesswork yeah, the circle of trust is big in this car, uh, but they should all work. Uh, getting into reverse should happen easily as well. If not, you know, potential clutch challenges there could be clutch on the way out. So, um, yeah, just have a little check of all the gears, check they work. You lift up that uh, the bottom of the gear stick, the um, little knob there to get it into the little collar i should say to get it into reverse so next thing to look at here is the carb this has got the uh stainless steel lobster on it the standard one is plastic uh, not so good you get plastic intercooler hoses here which sorry over there which pop off on the standard um, bit of a pain but of course if you want that concourse car that's what you've got to be looking for but carb uh, so uh, this is a solex carb i'm no carb wizard at all in fact i think they're a bit of a dark art and the people that know these are getting fewer and fewer but they, uh, they're a thing on this car. Um, what do you check for on them? Well, just check for the obvious signs of any fuel leak. Some of the hoses can perish. Uh, I had a little uh, fuel leak on mine, just needed sort of tightened up. And of course you don't want hot fuel spilling down to the engine, but check, check those. Uh, you can adjust, uh, you can use the throttle there if you want that thing there. That's the choke at the top, uh, just the idle. So it should be holding about 850 RPM. As I say, very simple, beautifully simple in their design check your uh, your coolant over there as well it should be uh, sort of holding up halfway there which it is which is good and then 
run the car right see if that's going down it should be holding and, and no no leaks there battery dead easy to replace and get access to uh, over here now if you can see that on the camera yeah that's coming out this is the perk fan uh, and the idea is it blows cold air onto the carb there to prevent evaporation percolation and allows for that hot start because these cars can be a bit of a pig to start in the hot so uh, that's pretty much all there is to talk about really under the engine so check for the obvious leaks and, and damage and um, just you know drive the car and see if it's driving like you expect it to right is there any hesitancy when you put your foot down could be for example uh, the enrichment jet and the carb not working uh, so take somebody who knows about these things um, very important next up we're going to talk about the bodywork so let's talk exterior and this car is standard pretty much um, got the decals there on the side you've got the uh, non-standard exhaust that's the only kind of recognizable non-standard item on the outside but generally this car is pretty standard so standard alloys 13 inch speedline alloy wheels that's the original part number says speedline on the rim there if you can make that out get right in there and effectively that is the standard fitment they came with unirule tires as well uh, as you can see fitted on this as well in pretty good condition still so 13 inch speedline alloys anything else is not original uh, you saw some turbine alloys that's quite a common fitment as well but back in the day loads of upgrades um, so they do kind of they do ride do ride pretty high these cars which is good because they're rally cars at heart right so they want to have good ground clearance uh, the thing to do back in the day was of course to lower them so you'd see cars that were really low and they look cool but again original should be a nice big gap under there right which you can probably see so just uh, consider that so yeah exhaust this is a non-standard exhaust standard exhaust is a little kind of small thing that hung down it drooped down uh, not good uh, they don't look great they don't sound good uh, they don't let the engine breathe properly you, if you want a concourse car that's what you got to have right you got to have that standard exhaust i'll see if i can uh, shop a picture of one of those in in terms of the build quality well there isn't any uh, these cars are so light so fragile uh, they the, the exterior is so thin to keep the weight down that they do suffer from rust so you're gonna have to look for rust and where are you gonna find rust on these cars well mostly uh, check in around under the arches very important to look there check around the rear as well uh, under the arches there you're going to sort of see rust in, in there and then all under the sills here uh, they're renowned for that other spots for rust are at the bottom of the uh, this rear window seal here you can get rust coming down or around in here and the same at the front as well all around in here so check all around in here for rust this car is pretty good on the rust front though um, but if they are starting to rust in any significant way unless you want a very big project i'd probably uh, walk away because once they've once the rust has started on these it's very hard to control so just have a good look and yeah i should say get it up onto uh onto a ramp if you can and look underneath very important okay next up we're going to talk interior and the seats are renowned for tearing here these are in really good condition You'll notice I have a towel on this seat, and that's purely to protect the seat. Uh, they're really in good condition underneath um, for their age, so I just want to keep them that way, and that's the only reason I've got a towel there. I need to get something that's probably a little bit better, right, a better cover, but just really to preserve it. But you'll see very often tears along here, along here, worn out bolsters. You can get the, fa the factory fabric now, I believe, uh, and have seats remade, redone. Other thing you're going to want to look out for is the red carpet. Is my jacket back up there? Is that in good condition? This one is in very good condition. Um, so really, really nice condition for that red carpet. You can get them uh, as, as spares. People have second-hand ones that they want to sort of get rid of if you want to get a new one fitted. But yeah, generally very good. Uh, the seats. Check the seats are secure, especially down here because these are really light and can fail i had one rip out back in the day whilst i was driving and that was uh quite 
it needed welding to get it fixed. Let's just have a look around the interior. As you can see here, the back is pretty good as well. You can see the door card over there starting to come away a little bit, unfortunately. So I have to get that looked at. Now here's the thing, with the door cards, this corduroy material is uh, it's kind of vacuum formed onto uh, this plastic thing. So once that's sort of coming away like here around the speaker, you'll just have to kind of glue it back on. But these door cards are in relatively good condition. If they're gone, they're actually quite hard to get hold of sets like this. So what a lot of people do is they just bite the bullet um, or accept the fact that they need to be covered in something else and have that done because this kind of corduroy material is actually really hard to get hold of. So check those door cards as well. In terms of the steering and the dashboard, really plasticky, really flimsy. Um, lots of times there'll be things that have been drilled out where they've put boost gauges or what have you. So, you know, it's just going to be accepted on cars of this ilk. Uh, I think this one has two down there that have been drilled. But yeah, I mean, the interior is pretty, pretty light, pretty sparse. Electric windows. So electric windows should work, but they are renowned for failing. They still work in here, but they're slow and you can see the motors are old and tired. So back inside the car, I had to move it out of the way to let some folk in. All well and good. So to wrap things up, I guess there's some other things that we have to consider. So just to sort of summarize the interior and exterior, right? The car is very simply put together. Renault 5s are very simple. Therefore, they're easy to work on, uh, provided you can, of course, get parts. The electrics in general, just check that all the dials and knobs are working as expected. The dashboards, the gauges will probably be a little bit temperamental. That's kind of fine. But generally, everything should work. Um, we spoke about the windows. That's an important point to consider. But yeah, the cars are generally very simple. Now, if you're lucky enough to get one of these and own one, how do you run it? How do you look after it? How do you maintain it? Well, keep it maintained regularly, keep the oil changed, and of course, fuel is a consideration. Now, back in the day when these things were made, they were designed to work on four-star leaded petrol. Can you believe we used to put lead in petrol? Can you believe that, huh? Crazy. Of course, no longer available. And you can't even get standard uh, unleaded petrol anymore. It's all got ethanol added, either E5 or E10. You want to put as, le uh, as less, as little ethanol in as possible. So E5 is your best bet, which is the super stuff normally, right? Um, so that's just something that you have to, to really think about because ethanol can perish the, the rubber seals, hoses, that kind of thing over time. So just, just consider that as well. And I believe I'm told that Esso, their super duper, unleaded although it says e5 doesn't actually contain any ethanol so i hear so that might be what i'm putting in here i do i do need to talk about fueling as well because we didn't talk about fuel system the fuel tanks are renowned for leaks yes indeedy so around the top there's a collar a rubber gasket that can fail over time it's kind of just literally up under just seeing that properly my my hand so it's kind of yeah, that's hard, harder to do, harder to point whilst looking in the viewfinder, but just sort of literally under there. But that can fail over time and you can get fuel leaking uh, out of that and down to the bottom of the car. And also there is a rubber bung or a plastic bung that's been put into the fuel cap on the side which will leak and fail over time. That's when they rerouted re the fueling for this car. Also corrosion on things like brake lines, I forgot to mention that, they're disc brakes all round, anything else is not standard. And there's no convertible version made, surprisingly. Uh, there, there is no convertible version of these cars. If you see a convertible version, it is definitely an aftermarket conversion. But if you do get in one of these, I wish you the best of luck in the search. Honestly, you will not be disappointed. Get out there, have a look for one, and just get one that you know you're going to love, that's been well looked after, and continue to cherish it. Uh, you'll have a great time. That's all for this video. Do like, do subscribe. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, if there's any other advice that you want to share, you know these cars, whack it in the comments below, right? Help other people out, because I'm sure there's plenty I've missed as well. Uh, in the interest of keeping it a relatively concise YouTube video, though, I'm going to wrap things up. So take care. See you soon. Bye for now.